We're going to continue our discussion on Internet of Things here in, in Lecture 3, and we're going to move to more of a security-based discussion surrounding IoT. As more and more devices of all types get put onto a network, uh, the first and probably the most natural security implication is that um, the attack surface is increased greatly. And think about the billions and billions of devices that we're putting in IoT, just simply there's more devices to hack. So every device that comes out has some hardware attached to it, has some firmware running on top of that hardware, and then some software stack running on top of that. So for every new device that comes to market, from an information security perspective, you have to think that um, those, those pieces of software, those pe the hardware design, the firmware design, are all likely to have some kind of vulnerability, especially as people are trying to transition devices to the market as fast as possible. Usually security um, is behind the curve, so I think you're going to see a great deal of vulnerabilities, and as IoT becomes more prevalent, I think there will be a push for security to, to catch up. But in the meantime, there's just a, a larger attack surface and just more devices to hack. Um, along with that, all these devices are, of course, transmitting or storing some sort of data. So there are data privacy concerns. Um, what happens when data is in transit? Is it encrypted? Is data encrypted at rest? If you're using an Echo Dot and they obviously have access to all the voice commands that you issue to it, what is Amazon doing with that data? Are they processing it for a better user experience? Are they selling it to other companies? Um, so data collection and data privacy are things that we're going to um, talk a little bit more about later. And also something that I call the dependence on things. As we begin to trust these IoT devices more and more, <coughs> excuse me, and we um, put more of our data into these devices and they become a part of our everyday lives, what happens if some of these IoT networks or the underlying infrastructure were to fail. So in some cases it might not be a big deal if say your smart toaster fails, um, you could just use a classical toaster, but if you think about some of the health related devices like smart insulin pumps or um, smart pacemakers, things like that, and there's some sort of failure, the, the consequences are much greater. So we're going to talk about uh, some of these impacts uh, in the, the slides to come. Um, but of course, there's many, many more problems that we're not going to be able to touch on all of them, but you'll see some more of them in, in the homework and get a chance to dive more deeply into those. So the first issue that comes up is physical security. In current computing context, it's pretty easy, I would say, to protect your infrastructure. But for me, I have a tablet that I, that I don't use, honestly. I have a desktop and a laptop at home have a cell phone, but a fairly small number of things. I don't have tons of IoT devices here in my house. But if I were to, you can think of an attacker could quite simply just damage things physically. Literally just steal them, break them, damage them, alter them, uh, you know, a number of physical attacks. And the fact that they're distributed, and some devices might be at home, some devices could be at work, some devices could be in my car or the car itself. You have different devices that are geographically distributed, um, so that makes attacks um, easier. So for example, I have here malicious node insertion. There is nothing uh, really that stops someone from living next door to you or being outside your home from um, standing up their own IoT device that um, appears to be a reputable device but really has some sort of malintent and the device can interact pretty freely as it stands now with um, any of the devices inside your house. It could be stealing commands, it could be doing remote execution, uh, but we don't have a really good view of security uh, in an IoT sense from preventing malicious nodes from, from being able to, to just join a network. Sensor tampering is another big thing. I mentioned a list of sensors before. Uh, people can alter sensors to give you false readings, um, or they could alter sensors to send your data somewhere else and steal your data. So sensor tampering, um, since sensors are at the heart of IoT, and they actually generate the data that's useful in IoT, sensor tampering is, is a big issue as well. 
And of course, the other problem with the physical attacks is that as there are more devices, you know, spread over, uh, spread over a greater area, you don't need to have access to the device anymore. We talked about remote code execution attacks before, um, right? Being able to write a piece of malware so you can remotely execute arbitrary code on a machine. The same is true with the Internet of Things. Um, as again, as the number of devices grows. Um, the attacker has no need to be in close proximity. They can uh, hack things in your house and right, have a major impact without being anywhere near it. Right, so as I said before, the, the impacts of attacks are, are much different. We're going to start to get away from just cyber effects and you're going to feel the physical effects. So I, I listed one here that I don't know if you guys have ever heard of, but there is a, a series of sleep deprivation attacks. And this is the idea that people hack into things like smart alarm clocks, smart LED lights, uh, smart music systems, right? and they turn those things on at inopportune times. So imagine you're in your bedroom, your alarm clock starts going off, your radio starts playing at the highest volume, and your LED lights, which are smart light controlled, just start flashing. Uh, that would be, sounds awful to me. I haven't been the victim of one yet, thank God. But uh, that's actually a real thing. And I mentioned before things like smart insulin pumps or pacemakers. But there are a number of intelligent health devices that if they were somehow hacked, and there are examples of this in, um, in, in practice in, in the lab setting, right? ultimately a death could be the result. Um, so it's kind of a scary thing as we rely on this more and more. The, the impacts go from, I say here, from cyber to physical. Um, but that's a that's a really really huge implication for for the uh, for the IoT. And of course, as as with any new technology, this was definitely true when the big data framework started coming out. Things like Hadoop, which used HDFS, Apache Spark, they are quick to get these frameworks out, but security usually lags behind in almost all cases. So as manufacturers want to be fast to the market to capitalize on on new connected devices. I, it is definitely the case that security lacks behind. So there's some work now being done as IoT has really taken off um, to put processes and frameworks in place to manage that security. Uh, but as it stands, at least right now, there are a number of known, known vulnerabilities that are that directly result from uh, security not being baked in from, from the very beginning. As is always the case, there's um, Lots of threats from a network security perspective. This is not too much different than the attacks that you think about um, on a regular network, so your LAN or WAN attacks, any kind of network. Um, but rather than happening at the physical level, these uh, attacks happen at the network level. So the most common thing I think that people think of when we talk about network security are denial of service or distributed denial of service attacks. And now keep in mind that these IoT devices, they are, they, they exist in a standalone sense more or less. Yes, they're connected to some sort of maybe Wi Fi network or Bluetooth network or something, but it's possible for other devices in the area, so like a malicious node, for example, to pop up. Maybe someone's in a van outside your house or someone's walking by your front door or something like that and they can interact with your sensor directly and potentially overwhelm that sensor um, and take it offline. So denial of service attacks are definitely still an issue with, with IoT things. A new thing has arisen called a sinkhole attack, which is, um, it's like the denial of service attack I just mentioned. What they do is they, uh, they pop up and somehow attach to the IoT in your house or at work and they interact and they get they trick nodes into sending them data but they just discard the data um, so we call it a sinkhole attack because they basically just steal the data and discard it or maybe they copy it off somewhere um, and so that renders your devices useless so these sinkhole attacks are a, for, a bit of a merger between a denial of service and a man in the middle attack uh, which we talked about when we discussed RSA and the other thing that's big is uh, radio frequency ID spoofing. So most of these devices right now use some sort of radio frequency to connect wirelessly, whether it's to 
uh, whether it's through Bluetooth is RFID technology, Wi-Fi is certainly RFID, and there are others. Um, it's actually not so hard to spoof an RFID signal. And so, of course, the threat there is that if, uh, if I can successfully spoof you, I can read or send messages that were either intended for you or supposed to be sent by you. Um, and I can trick people basically into thinking that I am you. And so if I can spoof your, your radio frequency transmitter or receiver, um, then I can essentially uh, pretend to be uh, any, any device that, that I want. And so the, the impacts there, I think, are, are pretty clear. We touched on this before, but data security might be the largest issue, at least I think it is in my mind. There are tons and tons of technical issues to address with IoT, but really everything always goes back to data. Data seems to be the most valuable entity in any system. Right? It's true in cloud computing. The <coughs> excuse me, as the IoT devices allow us to pass data that's much more personal. It says a lot a lot about us. It says a lot about what we do, how much money we earn, uh, what we like to eat, what we like to wear, places we like to go, and that can be valuable to adversaries for different reasons. So as you can see here, some of the things that it collects, I said, uh, your health habits, you could monitor possibly sleeping patterns, you can, matter, uh, excuse me, you can model what you eat. Uh, in terms of home security, I can maybe monitor what time you leave in the morning, what time you get home, how often you travel, how many people are living in your home based on who goes in and out, things of that nature. Um, it's probably clear why that could be uh, why that could be risky from a, a physical security perspective. And then, of course, there's lots of other uh, data about the electronics in your home. People have access to them, uh, which could be scary if someone could turn on your toaster and leave it running all day or something. Um, so there's lots and lots of data collected in IoT. And there's this trade-off that we're faced with, and I, I don't think this is specific to Internet of Things, but perpetually in IT we're dealing with this. We have all this useful data that makes our lives easier, but in order to be able to, to use it, um, we have to give up some semblance of, of privacy. Um, so I'm not sure if that line is the same for everybody. Some people don't want the convenience, and they just want privacy. Some people, many people I would say, just want the convenience and don't care so much about privacy. Um, so this is an interesting, it's a, it's a moving target, and I don't know what the right answer is here, but, but there definitely is a trade-off as, I think as convenience and data availability go up, I think privacy is sort of inversely linearly related, and so privacy goes down. The next question is, is where is the data stored? Certainly the IoT devices themselves store some data, but they also store a lot of data in the cloud. So it's not always clear where the data is being stored, who has access to it. Um, so how is data on your device controlled? Can anybody log into it? Are there access controls for different types of data? Uh, is it encrypted at rest? Is it encrypted in transit? Um, who has physical access to the device? Obviously another big issue, someone can just pick your device up and leave with it or pick it up, plug in the thumb drive, take the data and go. Um, that's also a huge issue. So um, where the data is stored, how data access is controlled, these are all important questions when talking about IoT data security. And then of course the, the IoT device providers themselves, um, they publish these lengthy user agreements and usually contained inside of those user agreements is some sort of privacy agreement. And if you think back uh, Samsung TV, there was an issue where I guess basically it was recommended that you didn't talk about sensitive things near your Samsung TV because it was recording um, basically around the clock. And then a vulnerability was found where people were able to remotely connect to your Samsung TV and listen to it. So it was bad from a policy perspective and also bad from a technical perspective. So there was such an uproar that Samsung eventually, they modified their privacy agreement um, to sort of appease some of the users. But that brings up a much more broad question is, is what, kind of, um, what kind of oversight is there for these cloud service providers and these IoT providers? So as you'll see in the homework, uh, 
actually the government is getting involved and groups are beginning to think about how to enact legislation that um, encourages or basically forces some of the IoT companies um, to provide a, at least a baseline level of, of security to its end users. And we'll talk about that more in the homework. So those are just some of the major things, the major security implications that, that come up when we start to move towards a more cloud, more connected um, type of paradigm. I did want to let you know that at least some groups are doing things to um, try to come up with a cohesive security framework to address the specific con security concerns that come up when we do this type of cloud uh, and connected computing. Uh, so if you look below, uh, there's basically a consortium of companies who are operating at different levels. You see them from left to right. It goes from hardware to software to security to systems all the way up to the cloud. And you can see that there are different companies operating in each of those areas. So it is the case right now that uh, if you're familiar with ARM, which is a type of processor, they're inexpensive, they're relatively simple to program. So they are definitely the preeminent processor in many of the IoT devices that exist right now. So there's been a push in open source framework that they're working on coming up with. Um, they're basically doing security analysis of existing devices. And then they're trying to make recommendations that um, help you produce secure software, secure firmware, that help you design IoT hardware securely. Um, and then there are threat models for once you have an IoT device, um, how can you assess, this, assess the security of that device? Um, so this is just one example. Um, there are many of them in the work. Uh, NIST is actually also working on an IoT standard for uh, recommendation for security. So we'll be able to uh, dig a little bit deeper uh, into some of these frameworks on the homework as well. So hopefully you enjoyed the uh, introduction to the Internet of Things. It's a, it's a pretty deep topic. I think uh, this kind of only just touches the surface and the homework and and discussion will, will help us take it a little bit further. We could probably do many weeks on it. But it's definitely an exciting field and there's lots of opportunities from, from a security perspective as I think you've seen and will we'll continue to see. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions at all, please let me know.